Hey guys, welcome to yet another recitation. This recitation number 26. And um, it's going to be something similar to the things we did before. So I'll start by explaining the similarities between the lenses and the, and the mirrors, okay? So remember we have two curved mirrors. The first one was concave when you polish the outside and the inside is reflecting. So we call this a concave. So these are mirrors. Concave or converging mirror then we have the one you polish the inside and the outside is the reflecting surface we call this convex or diverging mirror so converging because rays parallel to the mirror from infinity converge at the focal point and diverging because ray par uh, parallel to infinity appear to diverge from the focal point for the diverging mirror now we have lenses that behave exactly like these mirrors, but you have to be careful with the names. So we have a lens that looks like this. This lens is called, so these lenses, this lens is called convex lens, but this convex lens is the same as a converging lens. So be careful. And a convex lens or converging lens behave exactly like a converging mirror or concave mirror. Concave mirror behaves like convex lens. Then this other lens called con con concave lens is like this. A concave lens is the same as diverging lens. And it behaves exactly like that. So when I mean exactly, remember the last uh, lecture, the last recitation I told you we have about five different properties of a convex mirror. I mean, concave mirror. If the object is beyond C, image is between F and C. The same thing for a convex lens. If object is beyond C, so I'm gonna take one or two examples, similarities. I will draw the mirror and draw the lens so you see how it behaves. And you're gonna see the difference in images formed by the mirrors and the lenses. Is that okay? Is that okay? So these are the names you need to know. Now let me take the examples and let's do this really quick. Okay, so the last time I told you if I have a concave mirror like this and I have F and C, and I have object beyond C, so I draw the lines from the object beyond C, passing through F, another line coming through F and going straight like that. Is that okay? And then where these two lines meet, that's where the image is formed. So this object is image. So object beyond C, image between F and C, real, inverted, diminished. Let's do the length counter first. So a concave mirror behaves like a convex lens, so we draw a line at the center like this, and we draw a principal axis. Now a convex lens has two focal points at both sides, because it's two curved, it's biconvex, that's what they call it. And then two principal, uh, what's it called, center of curvatures, like that. Good. So object beyond C means object is somewhere here. Now let's see how the image is formed. I'm going to draw a line straight to this object. Now that line is going to pass through F. Is that okay? Is that okay? Then, do this very well. It's going to pass through F. Okay. Then, I'm going to have another line that crosses from the object and goes through the center of the mirror, like this. Like that. And where that ray meets the other one, that's where the image is formed. So you see the image? Between F and C, but on the other side. Because the image in front of the mirror is a real image. A real image for a lens is behind the lens, on the other side, because this is refraction, not reflection here, okay? A virtual image for a mirror is behind the mirror. A virtual image for a lens is in front of the lens, the same side as the object. So this image is real for a lens. It's inverted, it's between F and C, exactly the same case. So object beyond C, image between F and C, real inverted image. 
the same. If I put the object at C, remember what happened the last time? Image is also formed at C. If I do it here, object at C, image will be formed here at C. Same size as object, the same magnification, inverted mean. And remember, inverted means the height will be negative. That's how you know inverted. And virtual distance means the, the, uh, uh, the image distance will be negative when you do your mirror formula. So the same mirror formula, or you call lens formula, 1 over f is 1 over di plus 1 over d naught. Image, and that's the same thing you do here. Focal length, the focal length is positive for convex length or concave mirror, and negative for convex mirror or concave lens. Is that okay? And for the convex mirror, remember it forms only one image every time. The same for concave lens, it forms only one image every time. The same image. Virtual, erect, diminished. And this is the first case. All the five cases that apply to a concave mirror also apply to this guy. Just know how to construct the differences. Is that okay? As you have them, as you have them here. Okay. Now let's go straight to the problems in the in the quiz. So for this one, it is the last problem. So it gives us a focal point, a focal length of five centimeters and an object distance of seven centimeters. And object height of three centimeters okay and he's asking us to get um to get the image distance so we use one over f equals one over d naught plus one over di so this is object and image so one over five is one over seven plus one over di so if you solve for di you just get that to be 17.5 centimeters exactly what we did in the last recitation so now your magnification is minus di over d object that's minus 17 i mean minus um 17.5 over 7 so this same magnification is equals hi over h object hi we don't know h object is given to us to be 3 so i equate both of them i do that here i'm saying minus 17.5 over 7 equals hi over 3 so what is hi? 3 times 17.5 over 7 with a minus sign. Is that okay? Yep. So you do that, you get the right answer. So this is the last question for the recitation. And uh, we just get that uh, the right answer there. Okay? Okay, so I'm using my calculator here, and that just gives me minus 7.5, so minus 7.5 centimeters. So this is my image height and that's my image distance, okay? So the minus sign, like I said, it means the, up, the image is, uh, is uh, upside down, okay? That's what the minus sign tells us, okay? Okay, now let's go to the, the first problem. Which is true. I mean, the second problem, the second question, actually, the Brewster angle problem, where you have the diagram. Okay. For that problem, so we're just going to do some little trigonometry here. Let me try and make that bigger so you can all see very well. <clears throat> So for that problem, we have this. So you have your incident ray, and that's the completely polarized one, and then you have your ref ref refracted at 90 degrees. So this is your theta Brewster. It's the same as your theta incident, so I'll call that theta Brewster too. And this is your refracted angle, theta r, okay? So what you do is, if I consider here, this place is 90 degrees minus theta r, and this place is 90 degrees minus theta Brewster. Is that okay? But the sum of these two is 90 degrees also. Okay? So I'm considering here to be 90 degrees. So 90 degrees minus theta Brewster is this place. This is also 90 degrees. 90 degrees minus theta R is this place. But the sum of this and that is also 90 degrees. So theta Brewster, 90 degrees minus theta Brewster plus 90 degrees minus theta r is 90 degrees okay so i solve that i'll get that theta brewster plus theta r is 90 degrees good 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 
So it means theta Brewster or theta R is theta Brewster minus, I mean, 90 degrees minus theta Brewster. So I, I keep that in mind. Now I go to my refraction law, the Snell's law, that N1 sine theta 1 is N2 sine theta 2. So this is medium 1, the air, and this is medium 2, the glass. So N1 is for air, which is 1. Sine theta 1 is sine theta Brewster equals 1.52 sine theta 2 to sine theta r. But I know theta r is 90 minus Brewster. So this is 1.52 sine 90 minus theta Brewster. Okay? But sine of 90 minus an angle is cosine the angle. So sine theta Brewster is 1.52 cosine theta Brewster. So I do sine theta Brewster over cosine theta Brewster is just 1.52 divided by 1. So it's usually n2 over n1. The second one, but n1 is 1, so just 1.52. And this is tangent theta Brewster. So what is theta Brewster? Theta Brewster is the tan inverse of 1.52. And that just gives you your answer in that case, which is uh, 57 degrees, I think. Yeah. 57 degrees to calculate, okay? And then you are done with the Recitation for this week are really simple problems and easy to go. Don't forget to wash your hands after the recitation. You never know, right? Have a good one, guys.